I don't limit myself to any certain area of photography. I try to photograph every everything that captures my eye. But the most important special thing to me is, is photographing in the water. Uh, the ocean means the world to me and that's where I've spent my whole life in it. <laughs> every day I see new things that are just so captivating and inspiring to photograph. It entails a certain amount of respect and understanding, actually an infinite amount of respect and understanding for the ocean and the way it works and the people and the places you deal with. But it also entails a great amount of um, understanding of your equipment, patience, and a strong work ethic to be able to concentrate on capturing what you think would make a good photo once you're in the water dealing with the elements. Step one is choosing a location and considering the factors that will go into what gear you're going to use. If it's going to be a wave that's far out to sea, or if it's going to be stormy, or if you're going to be working with people and trying to get good portraits in the water, or just how you want to go about things. You have to consider so many different factors because you're limited by uh, a very constrained camera inside of a small aluminum box in the water. And you're also swimming around or on a boogie board um, which is an activity in itself. You have to know the wave well. If you're gonna be, it's a shifty wave at a beach break on a stormy day, then you're probably gonna want a lens that is a decent length to capture stuff that's far away and close, like a 50 millimeter. So if you're in the wrong spot, you can still get a photo, whereas if you're in the right spot, you get a great photo. Um, but if you're gonna be shooting a wave or a subject that's very stationary, very consistent, like, for example, if you're filming a uh, perfect point break and you're just going to be floating out in the water with no current, then you can choose uh, any sort of lenses, whatever you feel would best um, help you get the shot that you want to achieve out there. Prepping the camera entails having everything functioning in all the right settings on your camera, having all the batteries charged, making sure your autofocus or manual focus is set perfectly, having your cards cleared, and then making sure the water housing is completely sealed, cleaned, and will operate perfectly when you're in the water. You will be colder than a very active surfer paddling up and surfing, so you kind of need a thicker wetsuit. A good pair of fins really helps. So to have um, gear that you can work the best with and to have gear that you can rely on so you're not thinking about the gear when you're in the water and you're thinking about taking the photo is most important. Well everyone has a different way for keeping your port clean. Uh, the best way for me at least to keep my port clean and from water droplets to form on it is to just spit and lick on it and cover the whole port in a clear film of my spit from every edge, then dunk it several times and when the spit runs off there's this very thin, almost invisible like layer of slime that prevents water droplets from beating. And that's absolutely critical unless you're, you want water droplets in your photo, which can be cool sometimes. photos aren't too perfect. You'll never see a perfect wave or a perfect surf shot, but I think you'll see how I see the world, which is kind of in a very weird light. <laughs> Just studying the intricacies and the beauty of all the shapes, colors, and textures, and elements.